I took my Panasonic GH5 and the new Ziyun Crane 2 and I gave it a whirl shooting a real estate video. Here are my thoughts on that experience. Hi, I'm Grant and you're gonna have to forgive me for this very rather stark backdrop I've got going on here. We've just shifted into a new house and I haven't had uh, an opportunity yet to set up a better sort of recording or nicer looking place to record these videos, but bear with me. I am currently in my garage and it is full of junk which you can't see just out here, here, here and here. Some of you may have seen I put up a video almost a year ago testing the original Zion Crane 1 and I had it with a Canon 80D and a Tekina 11-16 lens and I wasn't very happy with the results. And I believe this mainly came down to that my Canon setup was bordering on the maximum payload for that original gimbal and there was no internal stabilization with that setup. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. So when the new Zion Crane 2 came out with a much higher payload setting, I was pretty keen to give it a whirl and see how it performed. Pictures will always speak more than the words that come out of my mouth, so here is a short video that I shot with my GH5 and the new Zion Crane 2. Overall, I was pretty happy with the way that video came out, but this brought up a more interesting question when I was doing or planning this review, is how do you test a gimbal? If it works, it works. I own the Moser Air Gimbal, which is a very similar setup, including the handles to the Zion Crane 2. I realize there are subtle differences to how different gimbals operate, but it basically it came down to a few features and thoughts, and I've listed them down in the following order. Both the Crane 2 and my Moser Air operate well or work well with my Panasonic GH5 and wide lens and I'll be pretty hard pushed to see any difference in the resulting footage when I look at it back in my edit suite. Both the Zion and the Moser Air have excellent battery life and you can almost forget about it once you've charged these batteries up. They both come in their own carry cases. The Moser Air has more of a Pelican style hard case whereas the the Zion comes in a quite nice sort of hard plastic case. One thing I really liked about the Zion Crane 2 is it comes complete with its own tripod base which you screw into the handle and this is essential when you want to put these gimbals down to recompose your shots or walk away from your setup. I had to buy this little tabletop tripod for my Moser Air as a separate accessory. In the Moser Air's defense though it actually comes complete with these operating handles which I really like and I had to purchase them separately with the Zion and I, I quite enjoy or I quite like using the handles because it gives you a, a very solid and steady operating position or grip to make perhaps more subtle movements. I also really like having the little LCD display on the Zion to see which mode you're in when operating the gimbal. Other gimbals I have used don't have this and you're sort of guessing as to what mode they're in when you're using them. The Zion has a very chunky and solid weight or size to it and I actually really quite like this. When I was using it on that real estate video that I just showed you, I didn't find that the weight fatigued me at all. I mean I could put the camera down obviously as I went but it wasn't hurting my back holding the camera out in front which is something you have to consider if you're using a, a heavier style of gimbal. 
I also believe that this extra weight of the Zion compared to, for example, to my Moser Air is actually a good thing and weight in the camera world often is stability. So heavier cameras are generally a bit, a bit easier to hold steady. So having a little bit of extra weight, I'm sure actually adds to, to the stability of the gimbal. That also led, I believe, to one subtle difference between the Zion and, and the Moser Air, for example, is that the footage I noticed probably was a little smoother out of the Crane 2 or the Zion compared to my Moser. And I put that down to the little bit of extra weight helping using your arms as shock absorbers. When I shot that real estate video, I actually recorded it in 50p on my camera, that's 60p for you North American users, and I did that with the intent that perhaps I'd have to slow some of the footage down to perhaps make the movements a bit slower or smooth out a few of the bumps, but to my surprise, when I was editing that footage, I hardly had to slow any of the clips down at all and I could use them pretty much straight out of camera, so that was a pretty good and pretty impressive feature when using the Crane 2. One gripe I had, and this is not unique to the Zion Crane, my Moser does it as well, is when I've got my GH5 or, or my Canon on here, I, I operate on the gimbal with its LCD monitor flipped out, and I can't get it into inverted mode, as when you came around, the handle hits the LCD monitor, and also when it's balanced, the I've usually, to, or to balance the camera on the rig that's usually out here, and I can't invert it that way because it hits there, so yeah. That's just a wee gripe. I could move or obviously shut the LCD monitor on the camera, flip it over and ca carry on, but you cannot start the crane in inverted mode either. The Zion also sports a follow focus knob and camera control capabilities, but I believe this is only available for Canon cameras at the moment. Even having the ability to start and stop recording from the handle would be a great feature, so hopefully that that uh, capability is coming to the Crane 2 very shortly. I believe you can actually get a third party cable for the Panasonic GH5 to operate it on the Crane 2, but I haven't had a chance to try that. To wrap things up, the Zion Crane 2 is definitely a pretty nice piece of kit, and I like the ability that you, ha you have the, the potential to run cameras up to 3.2 kilograms or seven pounds, so that kind of future proofs your gimbal for, or for perhaps heavier camera rigs. It's also obviously setting itself up for firmware upgrades in the future to allow other camera systems beside the Canon to take advantage of its uh, operating and follow focus modes. I'm now faced with the dilemma of which of these two very good handheld gimbals do I hang on to and which one do I sell. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.